Okay. Okay. We have a question again and from center of mathematics and you tell us about virus median microchips. Yes, yes, you can. I think everyone saw right? something about photo after lecture. Uh, are you going to also uh, Photoshop in the Zoom participants? Uh -huh. Are you going to Photoshop in the Zoom participants? <laughs> uh, or you, you could bring you, you, you can bring the laps off. Okay. Uh, okay. So. Uh, yeah, so here he is. Okay. Well, okay. So um, let me start by drawing. Uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, how to use this microsheaf uh, theory from last time um, to, to prove some results in mirror symmetry. And let me uh, let me start with some kind of di some kind of uh, uh, pictures which explain the, the the idea. So uh, this is a uh, this is supposed to be. I, I think I tried to draw this picture last time, but um, maybe I uh, did it a bit quickly. So I'm I'm going to try again. So this is supposed to be a torus, and uh, I I'm going to make some um, some holes in it. Um, and I, uh, I'll make the holes uh, here. Okay, so this is one hole. And let's make two more. Okay, so now, uh, now some kind of punctured torus. It's torus with three punctures. So uh, uh, this thing, if you uh, were to glue it together, it would somehow be this kind of crap. And now, um, uh, remember, we discussed this kind of Liouville, uh, uh, Liouville uh, uh, geometry. And so I um, make some kind of Liouville vector field on it. <laughs> which uh, points out near the puncture. And um, if you try and retract, it, 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 try and give the skeleton of this, this item, well, it will look like this. Okay. And so um, you can kind of see that uh, you can you can at least imagine that this is what uh, uh, somehow uh, you can kind of imagine this. And and um, well, let me just uh, draw this again. So it's at least topologically, there's one big circle, and then there's uh, three other circles which uh, come off of it. And um, I'm going to break up this into these. So this, uh, uh, let's make some kind of cover of this thing. Okay, so there's some kind of cover of this thing. And so it's, uh, it's three of these uh, guys, which I'm just drawing somehow uh, glued together along this kind of inclusion. And um, what we learned, uh, what I explained to you uh, last time, 
is that this kind of micro sheaves, or should, I'll just write this, uh, on, on this, uh, this kind of person, uh, this is uh, coherent sheaves on P1. And what I didn't um, so precisely explain last time, but I, maybe I will today, is that um, so coherent sheaves on P1, it has uh, some maps to, let's say, coherent sheaves on the point at zero and at infinity, just restriction. And this, uh, I explained last time, there's this functor of taking this like, kind of micro stock. That's how I began the talk last time. And there was that kind of like positive and negative micro stock. I'll somehow discuss this again in a second. And so this is, you know, um, uh, uh, you know Let's just denote these A and B. Uh, let's call these functors mu A and mu B. And um, well, the micro stock was some kind of vector space complex of vector space, so whatever. And uh, maybe today I will explain that why, why this is, you know, these are compatible. This, uh, um, this isomorphism, it, you can declare that it respects this structure. And so uh, here, um, if you imagine I glue something together out of these pieces along this, then that should, in order to get this guy, that should correspond to gluing together these P1s. Uh, The fact that uh, the fact, which is kind of advanced, it's an advanced fact in some sense, but it's easy to keep in your head. Uh, coherent sheaves uh, behave well under certain kinds of pushouts, and this this micro sheaves it behaves well under certain kinds of covers, and these facts together allow you to reduce the statement that. Um, Coherent sheaves on this guy is the kind of category of this thing uh, into the calculation which I explained last time. So that's um, that's the sort of way in which we connect to mirror symmetry. I don't I don't pretend yet to explain to you uh, so much about it, just to um, illustrate the general structure of the part of the subject I will not discuss today. What I would like to explain more about today, the first thing I would like to explain more about today is the general version of this statement. Where P1 is replaced now by arbitrary torque variety. And correspondingly, you will understand, then given the part of the, the analog of this discussion, we'll tell you how to prove mirror symmetry whenever the, um, Algebraic geometry side is something which is uh, somehow complex, like built out of a bunch of toric varieties glued along their boundaries and so on. This is the uh, is similar to the kind of object that um, uh, that we saw in Philip, Philip? Yeah. Philip's talk, uh, except in Philip's talk, the pieces were not toric varieties. Did you have this picture in your talk? I didn't go to it, so I didn't. Uh, um, at the end, sorry. Yeah, okay. At the end of Philip's talk, there was this picture, it was kind of a ball, this ball triangulated, those triangles, they meant something which was not quite P2, but instead some uh, leaving a um, item. So I'll explain to, what to, you, to you what to do when all the pieces are somehow toric varieties, and it's an interesting question whether that can be generalized to this kind of setting which Philip was discussing. Okay. So let's begin. So um, last time we uh, I explained that, that she's, um, uh, I use this kind of notation. This is somehow representations of this kind of quiver. Okay. Um, I think maybe it's explained more in this uh, after, after school session. And um, let, let, let's, uh, let, let, let's think about a similar fact. So I'm going to close up the boundary. 
Well, then I should identify these two. There should be representations of this kind of quiver. In other words, um, uh, well, what is this? this uh, what does that mean? It means I give a vector space and one endomorphism. And uh, well, um, that's the same as modules. So since there's a vector space, there's an action of the field. Let's say I work over the field C. And since there's an endomorphism, uh, the endomorphism acts somehow, I, I put this variable. Okay. Um, so uh, this has, uh, has, has another name. It's also called, um, I'm going to be a bit sloppy about, about issues of uh, infiniteness and finiteness and so on, and um, finite generatedness and so on. So I, I'll write co when I, maybe I should write qco or idco. Never mind. <laughs> and uh, um, the, co the corresponding Fukai category is uh, you have like a cylinder, and then it has some sort of uh, stop. So this is like the kind of uh, subject which we were discussing last time. But uh, let's, um, while we're at it, let, let's just discuss an even easier, uh, an even e easier, simpler instance of this, which is shoes on S1, which live, whose microsploit is only the zero section. Okay. Well, um, constant. And well, what does it mean if they should be constant? Or it has some value here. If you go all the way around, you come back to the same value, but maybe by some, uh, um, you know, uh, some endomorphism. So this. Um, but to say it differently, um, in the kind of discussion we we're having last time. Remember that, um, you know, last time when I had something like this, or maybe like this, I drew this picture. And the, consider the consideration that I allowed microsport in one direction, but not the other, it forced one of these to be an isomorphism and left the other one alone. If I force both to be an isomorphism, and these had better both be an isomorphism, if I then demand these be equal by connecting this up as S1, uh, then I have a point with an isomorph, like two isomorphisms in the same place, but no one promises you these are the same isomorphisms. So there's some uh, invertible uh, guy, but not necessarily the identity. Okay, so, and that invertible guy, I record its action in this T. Um, this, this last equality, in case you're confused, uh, this is because this is the ring of functions on C star and not similarly on. Uh, let's call this. Uh, I, this is just the. Uh, um, this is a one minus zero. Okay, so um, so good. Um, and now I remind you uh, from last time that um, so when when I had this when I had this kind of thing. And we we began we began the discussion last time by constructing some functor, which for now I'm gonna call it called call mu at the moment. And this functor, it sends a sheaf to um this micro stock, this f. Um I put the thing in, in the negative part, so let's put um and minus theta um zero. It, this is the, uh, the the micro stock with respect to the function. It's a locally defined function, but that's fine. 
uh, giving the angle. And um, okay, so I had some, 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 some function. Um, and remember, this was some kind of limit of cone of whatever. And roughly speaking, what it does is it compares the stock here to the stock here. That was the job of this thing. Um, okay, so we, we have this, uh, this function and uh, to, 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 to vector spaces. Um, and I claim that under this isomorphism, so remember this thing was supposed to be isomorphic, this kind of co A1. Let, 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 let's, before we go to co A1, let's look at this kind of mod CT. This mod, mod CT. Um, you can try and calculate what this is. And I claim that this map, in terms of mod CT, uh, it sends a module M, a module M, it sends it to M tensor um, C, T, uh, C. Okay, and, and, and the map from C, T to C is sending T to zero. Uh, yeah, that's what it does. And, um, well, uh, how, how do you, um, how, how do you check such a statement? Um, um, how do you check such a statement? Um, and the, the point is, so I, I just say it kind of roughly, the, the, the point is in terms of this, uh, in terms of this kind of picture, which I had made before, um, T is this map, okay? And so, um, uh, 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 what, uh, taking this tensor product, um, you, of course, yeah, cannot, not now, unfortunately, I have to say uh, something unpleasant, which is that, uh, everything always is derived, and what derived means is that when I say tensor C, you really have to resolve C. Okay. And tensor C really means you tensor with this complex. And that means I take, um, well, M is a module over CT, so I just take cone of the map from M. Sure. Uh, yes. Um, One more poke on is that what you're thinking? Um, uh, what did I? I mean, could you alternatively replace M like with a resolution by vector bundles and just take the fiber over zero? Yeah, you could do any of these things. Yeah. So yeah. Sorry. So 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 uh, uh, this uh, I shouldn't have written M here. I should have written um, uh, this. this uh, I wrote something slightly confusing. Um, I don't understand why. I think it's okay. M is. Uh, we just have to understand what M means. So uh, module over C P. That's yeah. over module over C. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, it, okay. It's possible to get confused by this, but it's also possible not to be confused by it. Okay, so, um, well, if, uh, if any of that or all of that was confusing, that's okay. I'm going to use it mostly as a black box. Okay, so the, I, I was just trying to explain to you how these different structures interact with each other. That's something, it's not fundamentally difficult, but um, you know, requires certain algebraic manipulation. Um, there's a couple other facts of this kind which I need. 
And th these are a bit more subtle. So um, uh, he here I had this GM in the multiplicative group, and this acts on the affine line. If you don't like these notations, you should just think of this as C stars. Um, and uh, that action, you can ask, so, so, so how is it reflected uh, on, on this side? Or you could ask a more basic question, which is how is the group structure of this guy reflected in, in this category? Well, you could ask even first the question, how is the group structure reflected in this category? Um, and let me, uh, and let me just, uh, uh, let me tell you first, what's not the answer. What's not the answer. So, so in, in this category, there is as for coherent sheets on anything, there's a tensor product. Okay. But because GM is a commutative group, there's another structure, namely convolution. And convolution is where you have uh, two copies of GM. You take GM time. Um, why is there a convolution? It's because multiplication gives you such a map. And so uh, if I take a sheaf um, here and a sheaf here, I can pull them both back to the product. I can tensor them and then push forward. Um, or maybe I can, yeah, and then push forward. And that's the. And so let me just tell you uh, what that corresponds to here. Here, um, in this locally constant sheaves on the circle, that corresponds to the tensor product of sheaves. This is a fact which is similar to a different fact which you may actually know, namely that when you do the Fourier transform, um, multiplication goes to something quite strange. Okay. And, and in some form or another, that's what fact that this is, or some, uh, some more advanced version of that fact. This is some more advanced version of a Fourier transform. And under this, uh, whatever, um, the, 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 the multiplication structure on this group here, which like moves around all the points and so on, it goes to a structure here, which leaves the points of this S1 alone, but multiplies kind of the, um, the, the functions on them. So. So, so the statement is that this action uh, gets translated to um, uh, it, um, it, a tensor product action of uh, the sheaves that's one. On sheaves. Okay. Um, maybe it's worth doing an example. So, uh, so example. Um, what, what's an element of, uh, let's say an element of cos C star. So, so a, a sample element of this is the structure sheaf of some point. Let's say, um, X, X is a point in C string. Okay. Now, but let, let's see what happens if I take O, X, and I uh, convolve with O, Y. Well, what happens? Um, I get, uh, I, I'm supposed to go on the product, is a C star times C star. I have the point X, I have the point Y. I uh, a tensor this um, uh, guy with this guy, this kind of uh, delta sheaf with this delta sheaf. Uh, oh, something non-trivial only happens when they meet. And so I get this kind of structure sheaf of this point, O, X, Y. And then I push forward by the multiplication map, which um, uh, to, to C star again, 
and I get O x times y. Okay, that's what that convolution is. Well, um, uh, well, what happens over here? This map it sends this point O x um, to uh, the the sheaf, which is the which has somehow stock just the complex numbers. And when you go around, it's the endomorphism multiplication by x. Okay, that's what it sends it to. You can try and do that calculation yourself. I'm going to call that cx. And maybe that conflicts with some notation I had before. Let's call it lx. Um, and if you know about tensor products, then you'll know that lx tensor ly is lx1. So that's some kind of uh, example about um, why that the convolution goes, I mean, I mean just how, how this correspondence is working. So maybe call it an exercise rather than an example. Okay. So you really analyze the action, like you analyze C star acting on C star. Yeah, I did C star acting on C star. Okay. Um, and then there's one last thing. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, so okay. So, so we'll, we'll use that later. But um, okay. So, uh, but let's think about how to think about co a n. Um, well, uh, actually, very easy. Um, this is co a one. Uh, you tensor it with itself n times. Seems reasonable, except you have to know what this tensor product means. That I'm not going to tell you. Um, but uh, okay, um, but it should at least be plausible because. After that, that you could put something here because after all, this is modules um, in some sense over a k x one through x n, which is equal to modules over k x one tensor tensor k x n, and you need to in invent the appropriate notion of tensor product that you can take out of the modules. So, um, well, what about this? Uh, um, so I claim in general that if I have um, lambda one in um, T star X one, lambda two in T star X two, that she is lambda one X one, Tensor sheaves lambda two x two. Uh, what's always true is this embeds into sheaves lambda one times lambda two x one times x two. Uh, and the math, this is almost obvious. You take the two sheaves, you tensor them together, you send them here. Uh, what, is, what is not obvious is whether this is an embed isomorphism or not. In general, it's probably not. But if lambda one and lambda two are Lagrangian, this is isomorphism. Uh, so, um, in particular, uh, from that I learned that that co a n is isomorphic to she's on this thing to the n. S1 to the one. Okay. Um, well, that's some progress. I want to just uh, show you how to 
this this probably this kind of drawings probably came up in Don John's talk. I want to show you how to draw this lambda one to the n. But let's take n equals two. So I have S one squared, which is a torus. So let's draw a torus. I have to identify the ends. And uh, how to draw this 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 thing squared? So here I was I, it was easier to draw because everything one dimensional. Now I have to draw a two dimensional singular locus inside a four dimensional space. And how to draw it? Well, helpfully. Um, okay, so, so uh, first I'll draw it and I'll tell you what the drawing means. So this is how you draw it. Um, I guess I'm supposed to do this one. Uh, and, and what does that drawing mean? Well, it means that along um, this line, or this circle really, I take the negative co-normal. And along this circle, I take the negative co-normal. And along this point, I take the um, uh, co-normal, which is negative in both directions. Uh, co-normal is the part in the co-tangent bundle which annihilates the tangent direction to that line. So this one has like a tangent direction here. I can ask uh, which co-vector annihilates it. Well, it's the one that points this way. Um, yeah, so that's how it goes. So th th this is how you can draw this kind of thing. This is a, this is a picture of um, this squared, which lives in G star S1 squared. Then maybe there was some. Did, did you draw these pictures? Yeah, I did this, but I'll concentrate on them. Okay, so he drew similar pictures. Okay. Um, so what's next? Uh, I now want to take. Maybe, maybe now I should say uh, why I want to do the next thing. You know, like one way to think about P1 is it's uh, C2 minus zero mod C star. Okay. I have no reason to stop at one here. Uh, Pn is similarly uh, Cn plus one minus zero mod C star. And uh, most, and is essentially all toric varieties, have this similar form. It's like C uh, something, A minus some locus, maybe not just zero, some Z. And the, the, this Z, it's the union of monomial, um, like, like hyperplanes and so on, like, like zero uh, mod some C star to some power. And this C star, it's a, not a coordinate C star, it acts in some diagonal way. Like this C star is acting diagonal. Okay, so this is, um, I'm going to try and, uh, try and eventually understand this guy and I do it in steps. I, so, so far I've understood this part. Now I should understand how to delete something. And then after that, I should just understand how to take a quotient. And uh, fortunately, um, the, the reason which the thing which makes this this plausible is that in algebraic geometry we have the two useful facts that coherent sheaves on x minus y um, this is coherent sheaves on x mod, uh, mod coherent sheaves on y and take this quotient in other words uh, you just set all the coherent sheaves on y to zero. I should say this is all. This is not very useful for writing this down explicitly. And the reason for this is that it's hard to understand how to take Homs in a quotient category. But to prove things, it's useful because this is the, the 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 first useful fact. And then the the other useful fact is if I want to take some kind of quotient, some uh, um, W mod G G some group action. Well. Uh, there's some sense which this is true. Is the G invariance 
um, of this thing. And uh, the sense in which, in order to make that statement true, you have to say the word derived a bunch of times and you know, understand very carefully what invariance means, but um, I will elide that part of the discussion. You can, you can almost take that as a definition. And I would say, uh, with statements like this, it's the kind of, uh, let me teach you a general lesson about mathematics. It, very often in mathematics, um, you've written down one definition, like coherent sheaves or quotient or something. And there's some statement you would like to be true, like this kind of statement. And you discover that for the definition you wrote down, it's false. And then uh, what typically happens in mathematics is for 10, 20 years, people, um, you know, like work very hard to avoid the fact that this uh, statement you wanted to be true was false. They just work around it in various ways, show it's true in various cases, so on. Then 10, 20 years later, someone says, screw it. I'm just going to redefine things so that this was true all along. And uh, fortunately for us, we're at the point in mathematical history where these statements for the appropriate definitions just true. Okay, so, 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 so what that means is that um, if I want to calculate, if I want to prove mirror symmetry for this guy, uh, it's enough to understand, well, first of all, I better understand mirror symmetry for this guy, which I do now. Then I need to understand what happens when I delete someone. And then I need to understand what, what is somehow mirrored to quotienting by someone. And so uh, let, me, uh, let me tell you about that. Okay, so, so I now need to define, uh, so let's, let's keep this here. Uh, let me tell you what's about general fact. So fact, if I have lambda um, at prime and lambda, both Lagrangian, these lives in some T star X, conic Lagrangian. Um, and, and then, then uh, and if I want to understand sheaves um, lambda prime X, well, uh, it's always true that this is sheaves lambda x uh, modulo the, um, the, the, the microstock um, co-representatives co -representatives at points at smooth points in lambda prime, minus, uh, lambda minus lambda prime. There are some words in here I have to tell you what they mean. So microstock, you know, that was this puncture that we began, uh, we, 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 we began life by talking about. It's erased now. But uh, what are those co-representatives? Well, it, it's a fact that for the appropriate somehow uh, categorical setup, um, so remember, we had this functor, which takes f to um, f uh, phi uh, p, this microstock functor. It's a fact in this situation, when, when, when this phi is, when d phi is a smooth point of your Lagrangian, that in fact this functor can be what's called co-represented, co-represented. -rep, co in other words, there exists some object uh, C D P um, with this property. Okay, it's a true fact that this is a true fact, which is not obvious at all. Um, and uh, the statement is that um, this guy, it's I take this category, 
I take all of these co-representatives and I just kill them. But why should you think that's plausible? Well, um, what is this thing? This is, uh, you know, this, this says the micro support had better be contained in Lambda. And this says the micro support had actually better be contained inside Lambda Prime. So um, the micro stocks at points in Lambda minus Lambda Prime should be zero. So here I've just enforced that that's uh, true. Um, so uh, somehow uh, this prescription, reasonable objects, then you have to convince yourself it's correct on Homs. So this is one true fact. And um, let me give you an example of this microstock uh, 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 functor, so example. <laughs> So when I look at this sheaves, uh, this S1, I want to tell you uh, who co-represents this microstock. Okay? Now there's a map from R, uh, actually whether it's, uh, I, 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 whether it's greater than zero or strictly greater than zero, I'm gonna get wrong here, but there's a map like this, um, pi, and I can consider the sheaf pi star z, and then up to putting the correct sign here that's in this category. And, and by the way, think about what this looks like. It somehow, you know, this map, it winds around somehow forever and not by accident looking a lot like this kind of wrapped uh, Bukai category object, it's not an accident. And um, so the stock of this sheaf here, it has infinite rank um, everywhere. But somehow, like this, this, this infinite many copies, it gets shifted by one as you go around. And so, so, so some, some exercise for you is that this guy, th this is the guy. And so the, the, if you want to complete this exercise, if you want to somehow get all the way, you know, like sheaves circle S1 equals sheaves this S1 modulo this person. Okay, that's, that, that's the kind of thing which I'm saying. So that's like for a place on the prom. So. Yeah, on this prom. Okay, so now, uh, how much time have I used? In like 17 minutes. Okay. So um, now I have to tell you, so I've told you in principle how to um, delete. You can read this fact two ways. You can read it as telling you, um, if I want to delete things from the uh, somehow thing controlling my micro support, what should I do? That's one way to read this fact. We want to read this fact the other way, which is if I want to construct an inter interesting quotient of categories and describe it, as someone's micro support, then what should I do? So I'm going to read the fact that way. So I uh, so suppose Z is some union of coordinate coordinate at subspaces of A N. So for example, it might be just zero, like just the point zero. I'll do, I'll do the example explicitly in one second. Uh, then I define lambda z. Um, this thing, uh, it's going to be, so this is some definition. Yeah. Lambda z is some subset of um, this, this thing to the n. And it is the union of co-normals to strata, which are not uh, corresponding. So, so th th this thing, after all, it sits inside S1 
uh, to the end, a T star. Union of conormals of strata not corresponding to Z. So what do I mean? Um, well, uh, Z, you know, th th this S1, it's zero union. Uh, I, I write S1 like this. And so it's point union uh, this. And um, so, so for example, if Z is just zero, then, so, so yeah, let, let, let's do explicitly an example. Example, if um, so n equals two, so in other words, we have that picture. Um, Z is zero inside C squared. I, I'm sometimes writing A2 and sometimes C2. Um, uh, then what? Well, um, uh, you know, uh, here I have the circle squared. And the relevant strata, the, the strata, what are they? There it is. Here's a stratum. Here's a, uh, here's a, here's a stratum. And here's a stratum. And uh, what's the corresponding stratification of, of C squared? It's um, this thing is a zero union. C star times zero, union zero times C star, the union C star times C star. Okay, that's, um, maybe I'll, I'll write them in the corresponding colors. So if my Z is just this one, then um, I should take the conormals to the strata, which are not contained in Z. Ah, uh, uh, not, not, not as corresponding conormals, not, cor not contained in the locus. So, okay, the locus corresponding to Z is just zero. Just, you know, this is the corresponding one. And so which strata are not contained in there? Uh, this guy, this guy, and this whole thing. And what are the conormals to that? Um, well, the conormal to the zero section, that's already a Lagrangian. So it's conormal just itself. These ones, their conormals are like this and like this. And uh, you observe, uh, wh why, why did I make this definition? Well, I set it up so that uh, this one differs from this one exactly by deleting this piece. So it follows from this fact, follows from this fact that um, uh, she's, Lambda Z, I mean, this fact plus that fact about AN that we had before, she is lambda Z, S1 to the N is isomorphic to uh, coherent she is on AN minus Z. Because I've deleted exactly the pieces corresponding to the microstocks. Um, which somehow match up with Z. It's a true statement that you fully delete the point and if you take this kind of non compact. Uh, I, I should, I mean, uh, I. Is that. I, I, uh, the precise statement. Um, I think I said that, I think I wrote the precise statement. It's the union of conormals, the strata not corresponding here. And the thing which I delete is an open subset of that closed locus. But it's an open subset, which basically contains all the smooth points in this conormal.
Okay. Um, Can you say the again what's the difference between this and that? Uh, well, uh, in this one, I included this conormal, this piece of the conormal at this point, and this one I did not. That's the only difference. I mean, do I, is this not the, the Weinstein manifold for okay. uh, Let's just try. Achieve this equals co A to minus zero. Isn't this the picture where you have a force and you attach to Yes. Well, we haven't attached them yet. Uh, we haven't attached them. Yes, that's it. Okay. okay. Um, okay, so now, um, well, there's, there's one, there's one, uh, well, so that, that was, um, that was for uh, deleting something. Now I should tell you about taking quotient. So, um, again, my torque variety T, I, I unfortunately erased this. It's supposed to be some A, Z mod some group G. And um, uh, let's write this kind of sequence, one G. It sits inside this multiplicative group. Uh, this is a different T. Um, This is a compactification of this torus T. And uh, if, uh, in this setup, I'm going to want to make the, um, the corresponding uh, lattices of characters. So this M, this M, T, G, M. Okay, so um, I have these these uh, groups. I make the lattice of characters. Um, oh no! Oh, it's, uh, oh there's two M's. Um, one one of these was. Uh, oh no! And this one's supposed to be M. This one's not supposed to be M. Let's just call this. Uh, let's just call it what it is. Um, G, G. So, so, so why, why, why am I, why am I doing this? Um, so let me first, uh, we'll, we'll come back to that in a second. But first I have to explain the basic idea of what's going to happen with this question. Which is um, so, you know, if we want to think about the relationship between sheaves on R and sheaves on S1. So S1, after all, is R mod Z. But what is the relationship between these things? Uh, when, when does a sheaf on, on R descend to a sheaf on S1? When is a function on R? This then do a function on S1. Well, if it's periodic. In other words, if it's invariant under translation. Okay, so you get the idea that there should be some, it's some that okay, there's a translation action on this, you just pull them along with the translation. And uh, there should be some notion of taking invariance so that this is true. In other words, if I know the sheaves on R together with the translation action, I can recover the sheaves on S1. But what about going the other direction? Um, so I, here, here the situation is a bit delicate, but let, let's just think about what kind of thing you would like to be true. Okay, so um, uh, uh, how should you recover the, the sheaves on R? Well, uh, 
the, the kind of thing which you have here, which you don't have there, is you can tensor by that sheaf with some non-trivial somehow monodromy, the ones we were discussing at the beginning. And going up to R should in, and, and what is that? So, so there's some action on this thing. There's some action on this thing of this GM. And that action goes by this tensor Lx, which we discussed at the beginning. Okay. And uh, the reason why you have any of these guys in the first place is that this person, it has some fundamental group, and R is the place where that fundamental group is universally trivialized. So that makes at least plausible the following statement. Now, this, this statement would seem to you a lot crazier than, than this statement, okay? And, and why is that? Uh, well, if you, have, if you think about like functions on a circle, like periodic functions, how on earth are you going to get all functions from just periodic functions? And that, that's why this statement should seem a little bit crazy to you. Nevertheless, in this world, it's true. And let me... Statement, which is going to be, we're going to use... Um, So the general statement is some form of uh, some kind of Pontryagin duality. So if you go look up the uh, word Pontryagin duality in, a, in Wikipedia, you won't find this statement, but you'll find some uh, something one category level down, and the uh, you have some kind of. Um, uh, Just in general, if you have this kind of setup, um, she. Okay, so in, in this setup, you're going to have categories acting on by G, and here category means presentable DG category. That's just for the experts. And you can have category acted on by L. And if you have, and the statement is that if you have a, a such a category, you can send it to its G invariance. Um, and if you have such a category, you can send it to its L invariance. And first of all, it's a true fact, the G invariance of this category have an L action and vice versa. And moreover, it's true if you do one, then the other, you're back where you start. Okay. Which is the, uh, uh, which is the, uh, the, the, the general case of this example. Now, how, how do we how do we use this? Can I try to understand this example a little bit better? So yeah. considering with Lx, it's like it, it acts on local systems by just multiplying the column on the, the monogramy, whatever, by that number x. Yeah, that's right. So that doesn't have any like there is no invariant local system. So these are like some complicated. But if you trivialize the action, if you if you take homotopy fixed points of the action, um, uh, you, you like have to imagine a category on which that acts somehow. Um, I mean, some okay. It's, it's it's difficult to explain. Yeah, it's difficult to explain. But like an object, even the top line though, like taking the z invariance. Are you, even the top line is not trivial. <laughs> The, 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 the bottom line is extremely non trivial. Like, somehow, are you saying that somehow this Z means that it's like objects equipped with this? Yeah, yeah, Z, yeah that's right. Yeah. Uh, trivial, like a, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like a linearization of the Z action. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I think maybe there is someone uh, where this is maybe trivial. If you take the push forward of the constant sheep on R. Then I think maybe um, yeah that that, that 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 person if you do this it somehow it, it doesn't know 
it's like some kind of direct sum of everything with x and x squared. Yeah, 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 this kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, by, by, by push pull formula, right? If you have this push forward of Z tensor as alki, that's equal to push forward of Z tensor pull back alki, uh, which is, and, and this thing, this thing is trivial. Did you pull the back door? Okay, so um, I want to use this fact and, and make some kind of conclusion. Uh, but I want to keep up this picture actually. Um, I, need, I need this still. So, um, Okay, so uh, um, I want to now consider this uh, kind of sequence. So, this is, this is a, just a torus. This is some kind of um, uh, some, some kind of cylinder. This is just a Euclidean space. And if I have some element here, I want to take the fiber, which I'm going to call A gamma. All right. it, it's it's some kind of torus. I mean, it's it's basically this torus. And, um, oh, I'm sorry, I have to do that later. Um, at first, uh, first, uh, yeah, but, but using this uh, same, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll deal with that in a second. Using the same business, um, I, uh, you know, there's this. Um, this is a very trivial exact sequence. Yeah, trivial exact sequence. I mean, it's not, I don't know tri what, what, what trivial means. It's not a complicated, there's, there's nothing subtle about it. It's a. Rm cross R, you know, torus. Yeah, you can split it, yeah. Um, so uh, I want to consider also the related thing, which is uh, this one Rn mod Zn. This is a cover. This is, a fine, this is somehow. Uh, this is the cover, the discrete cover. And discrete, and maybe not discrete. It, it, it's some kind of cover corresponding to, uh, yeah. It's discrete, it's discrete cover. Uh, Zn is the fundamental group of this guy. I have some subset of the fundamental group. I take the corresponding cover. That's what this is. And um, I, I take the somehow pullback. Here I had this lambda z. Z has nothing to do with these people. I had this lambda z. I take the pullback and define lambda z m. Okay. Um, and uh, now, uh, um, okay, I'm going to want this picture in a second, but let's erase everything else here. Um, uh, so, so the, the, the point is that I can study sheaves on this lambda Z M of R N mod M. That's a perfectly good thing to study. Okay. And, uh, I can then, uh, of this guy, I can take the quotient. Z 
and more of that. I take these invariants. And um, well, uh, because of this, uh, this, this kind of, uh, uh, I mean, the, the, by the easy part of that discussion, which is not erased, this is the same as sheaves of lambda z, um, zn, uh, rn, mod zn. Okay, I, I have this thing on the cover, I take invariants, I'm back down to where I started. And this one, remember, this is what we learned, was this is co an mod uh, minus z. That's what we learned so far. Now I take I take um, uh, I take um, uh, g in I take g invariants. G is this g. And taking G invariance is what I had wanted to do here, so that's good. Uh, who knows what it does to this? But what it does to this, according to this Ponteryagin duality, is just get rid of this guy. Okay, so so that's it. If I um, and let's do this code. But let, yeah. huh? I thought you were finished there. Oh, I have to explain one more thing. Yeah. Maybe two more. What, what is that called? Oh, T? Well, uh, this spark variety. Oh, T is the spark variety. T, T was the spark variety. Oh, yeah, this, this one. Okay, but, but let, let, let me, let me yeah. this, this example explain what has happened. So, so in this example, um, uh, this M, um, I mean, it, it, in this example, uh, the sequence here was one to C star, this is the diagonal C star, to C star squared, I guess quotient also C star zero. And so um, I have to unwind, when I go up to this M, I have to unwind this kind of, uh, this kind of diagonal direction. So right now this thing is a torus, but it ends up being some kind of cube. Right, so I, I unwind this direction some kind of like a tube. And in this tube, you have this kind of, uh, this kind of endless uh, pattern. I, I, I unwound one direction of the torus. What is the cube? Tube, 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 tube. Yeah. tube. Yeah. A tube, tube. <laughs> I, I unwind this tube and I, I, I take some, I this, kind of, this kind of endless thing. And so what, I, what I've shown you so far, um, uh, more or less, uh, okay, there's many somehow uh, details, but uh, what I tried to explain so far is that, um, that, that this is coherent sheaves on, uh, that this thing is coherent sheaves on P2, or P1. But that's not what we saw last time. What we saw last time is that if I take a slice here of this tube, so on this slice, you see you have one sort of positive covector and one sort of negative covector. What we saw last time is that on a slice of this tube, uh, you get coherent sheaves on P1. Now these facts are both true. And in fact, you can deduce the second fact from this first fact once you um, observe that uh, the geometry in this kind of transverse direction is in a certain appropriate sense locally constant. So that's, that, that's the most subtle part of the argument, which I don't discuss at all. I can discuss it in the discussion section. And that most subtle part of the argument um, uh, it le leads to the somehow, so this is only for the experts, which is that if you've ever seen, if you've ever seen somehow this kind of mirror symmetry before, you will not have seen this long unwound thing. You'll have seen the slice over this guy. And the, the slice over this guy, it's exactly this FLTZ prescription. Maybe if you take it through here. And so what, what, what you get by the construction I've described is not just the FLTZ prescription, but a whole 
Um, I mean, that's at gamma equals zero. You've got a whole family, uh, somehow a whole family of it. And the, the, kind of, the kind of monodromy of this family is the action, somehow uh, you can identify it with tensor product by line bundles and so on. There's a whole story you can say about it. Okay, so that's, um, that's what I wanted to say about toric varieties, but uh, um, I'm probably already way over time. Uh, but I, I'm nevertheless going to take maybe, maybe a few more seconds because I promised you that I would describe this proof of this hacking Keating theorem. Um, and so I'll, I'll just say what kind of, uh, what kind of ingredient. Um, I, I'm just going to quote for you a, a, a different theorem. Um, uh, because it's um, not a general form of this. Uh, it's kind of it's kind of interesting in the Liang context. So this is a this is a theorem, but uh, fairly recent. Uh, Benjamin Gamage and Ian Lee, and what this theorem says is the following: It says that if I have X a smooth variety. Um, a D, this, this is a smooth D, a divisor in X, a divisor, and then H in D. Um, this, is, this, is, this is again a divisor. Okay, and that, that everyone's smooth. Then um, the, the, the following so, so the theorem is that if I study coherent sheaves on the blow up along. H of X, and then you from this delete the strict transform of D is equal to uh, somehow this, this push out diagram. So this yeah, this is a kind of strange push out diagram because one of these is a push forward map and one of these is a pull back map. But uh, anyway, these guys prove that this is true. Um, it, it, it's, it, it, given what we know in algebraic geometry, I mean, uh, given what we know in algebraic geometry about um, how blow ups work and the direct. And the, the, Categories of sheaves and so on. It's not a difficult proof. It takes them a page and a half. Uh, so they prove this theorem, and what that means is, it's kind of orthogonal to maybe the rest of the talk. But what this means is that when when you have um, the mirror of a toric surface like this one that I drew. Um, so this is uh, a G minus, this is a mirror to H minus zero. Okay. Um, and now I, I draw it in the other way. I draw it this torus, and you somehow um, you have these conormals, kind of cylinders coming out. Okay. So this is H two minus zero, and this is a conormal circles coming out. Um, and now I choose uh, um, uh, I choose maybe the divisor in inside here. Um, so let's take one one in here. Okay. Um, that that's uh, uh, um, uh, I, I should draw the same. So 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 in I in, in, inside here I have a C star a C star cross zero disjoint union. C star cross zero, this kind of thing. And then I have the um, well, one, zero, disjoint union, zero, one inside there. And uh, here um, I, uh, I consider this, uh, this picture. Okay. And what this, what this diagram is saying is it's saying that if you look at co a2 minus zero, that's this guy or this guy. And you uh, consider the, um, this, this map from this one, which 
uh, maybe I, I somehow mentioned in passing but didn't explain in detail, that's the restriction out here. This, this co of uh, this thing. And then um, uh, this is like back plus back of this one. Uh, that that the, the, the blow up of, if you blow up these two points and then delete the strict transforms of these divisors, that is the same as attaching these two uh, disks. And that's exactly what that term says. And so um, that more or less immediately gives you the proof that it's not going to keep through. Not, not in this particular torque surface, but use the appropriate torque surface. This missing point zero should really be missing, or is this this uh, this there's like they they don't write cluster varieties, but they write cluster varieties up to two dimension two or something. I mean, yeah, they, I mean, they, they're discussing this cluster varieties, but for in any way. So it's you actually get the cluster variety. No, no, no I, I mean you don't actually get the cluster variety. But for this hacking and kidding business, I mean, you've deleted the boundary divisor, right? Yes. So you don't want that point. Yeah. yeah. Zero. Yeah, zero is, in, is zero is in the. Uh, I mean, that 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 zero is would be if you closed up these guys. Are you deleting the transform of these guys? I see, but you're deleting zero kind of before. It doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, I, I deleted. I just never. Yeah, yeah. Anything like. The... Yeah. That goes through this A2 minus the origin. Yeah. It's the first time that I see it like this one. Yeah, so it is. Yeah, you, you, you can, you are, you are asking if you can prove it in this way. That's how you prove it. No, I, I know you can. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, uh -huh. Okay, uh, that, that, that's all that I have to say. Okay, let's thank you that for your like. Okay, any questions in the room? No, I, I can ask a question. Okay. And after I see your shift categories, I'm a little bit confused. I mean, you said something in the beginning, but your shift category is the shift of unbounded shifts on the skeleton? Yeah, always unbounded. Yeah, not, not, it, 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 it doesn't matter. I mean, it, it, if you really want to write code, you should take compact part. If you, uh, I, I, I mean, I said for this lecture, I'm going to ignore all that business. But if you want to do it properly, then cheese, uh, uh, and I've always tried right Indico. Uh, yeah, yeah, just complete. So the properties for coke is actually for. I mean, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I mean, co is the compact part of Indico. This, this is why David Nadler did this thing of taking unbounded and compact part. He somehow. Um, he knew that somehow the, the correct thing to do in the B side is use INCO and take compact part. And so he was trying to catch the same behavior. That's it. Okay. So, so if you wanted to understand this, the mirror statement for a more complicated attachment of curves, then would you also do kind of the local idea surface with the nodes of the divider missing? Or something? Yeah, sure. Yeah, you, you begin with the torque thing. You you somehow you keep out those nodes of the divisor because you, you don't want to include these intersections, right? Because then your handle attachment is uh, has some piece of infinity left even after you attach. Um, so then you include these pieces together. Yeah, you glue those ones in. You invoke this theorem. Um, actually, uh, uh, maybe you also need a glue here. The gluing theorem is, I mean, micro sheave satisfies gluing theorem. Yes. Uh, so so, so the, the, the point of this theorem is that those guys knew micro sheave satisfies gluing theorem. So they knew this had to be true. Um, and so then they just proved it. I have one question, but I don't know if it makes sense. So there's this kind of thing that has this uh, green structure, right? So it's not even unique. 
so what what's happening here when you go whatever happens is structure? Um yeah, that's uh that's a bit long story. Um so you can ask uh, uh that's a long story. Let me tell you later. Uh, that, 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 that's a long story. Okay, maybe let's see other questions. Yeah. What about all the online questions? Any online questions? I guess so. So let's thank you right again. Yeah, it's very interesting. You know, I didn't know. I I knew that there was a question. Yeah, yeah. But they do this on the multi-digital, but I didn't know the project.